There's definitely enough time to do this classic problem that you should know how to do. There are homework questions that are similar to this that involves airplane, actually. But um, so this is one of those questions where you can get tricked into making wrong choices easily. So I really wanted to make sure that we go over this problem eight together. So uh, take, uh, read the problem while I get the board ready and uh, erase some stuff. I guess I have to do it here. I don't think we will have time for problem nine, but. Uh, maybe I'll make a video. Um, all the friction does is it just complicates the problem so that it takes longer to do it. It doesn't introduce any conceptual issues. So everyone okay with what the question is describing? Kind of. Um, it's a describing, oh, I think I have, yeah. I have these toys that you will see eventually soon. So you know, if we have a road, sorry, I can bend it this way. But um, if the road is just bent this way, you can see that as the car goes, if the road is frictionless, it won't be able to make turn. It'll just uh, slide off the road, right? Yes? So to help the car turn, um, in addition, um, so it's saying that to, in addition to making this turn, it'll make it banked. It'll make it slightly angled so that, um, so that the, it'll help the car make the turn. Yeah? OK. So. So here the, um, so I can draw, well, can I? I can draw two pictures, the top view. So if you are looking at the motion of this car from the top, the road should undergo some circular path. Or the road curves along a circle of some radius r. Right? I'm drawing only part of the circle, but the idea is that this would be extending into a full circle if, I, you know, if they made the road that way. So this is the top view, and we have the bottom view. Uh, no, sorry, not bottom view. Um, side view, from view, let me call it back view. So, so from the top, let's say this is the car that's going on that road, moving at some velocity v. And imagine looking at this car from behind. If you are looking at it from behind, the back view, then what you should see is that one, the road will be banked, curved, uh, um, angled. So this is the cross section of the road banked at some angle theta. And this is the view of the car from behind with the tires and whatnot. And I think I explained this notation earlier. If we are describing the velocity of the car, we would describe it with this symbol here. This is the velocity of the car. Everyone remember this symbol? It means the vector pointing, wait, did I, I did I introduce it in this? Yeah, it means vector pointing into the, into the board. So that's the velocity of car in this back view. Yeah. So you kind of have to describe both of these pictures to describe the motion fully. Because in the back view, it's hard to label this radius r um, and or the velocity. But from the top view, you can't really see the angle of the uh, road. Yeah. So, so this is the description of the setup. And what the question is asking is, what, what, um, ah, what they're essentially asking is the banking angle. So, so you are specifying the radius of curvature and the velocity of the car. And what the question is asking is, what should be the angle that the road is banked at so that um, so that the car doesn't slide down or up. Yeah. All right, so let's go through the steps that they're telling us to do. Um, so I hope all of you realize that this is essentially a force problem. You have to analyze forces here to answer this question. So then standard strategy, the first thing you would be doing is drawing the free body diagram. Okay. So, <laughs> so let's follow the steps that they're guiding us uh, through and see what we get. So the free body diagram of this car is, well, so I'm going to use the back view to, to draw a free body diagram, by the way, because most of my interesting forces are vertical, so it's hard to draw that um, on the top view. So I'll use the back view to draw my free body diagram. So um, what are the forces on the car? Gravity pulling it down. Normal force, what direction? 
Like perpendicular to the road, right? Yeah. Okay, any other forces? Do we need any other forces? We say friction. But friction, like a traction, the force between the tire and the road, right? Now, in normal cases, yeah, there's that force. There's also air resistance. Um, so my question more is, uh, do we need any other forces? No. Yeah, if you are saying that the car is moving at constant speed V, then we don't need any forward and backward forces. Um, yeah, we don't need it for now. And, or we can say they just balance. And um, well, it did say, wait, where does it? Oh, it says surface is approximately frictionless. So you know we might have thought of a friction going down the hill or up the hill, but the problem says no friction. So, so this is it. This is the complete free body diagram, and the way the question is, the situation is described. We don't need any other forces. So now my second question: um, What's the direction of acceleration based on this? Or what do you expect the direction of acceleration to be? Yeah, towards the center. So if I drew it here, this would be the direction of acceleration. If I drew it here, can you tell me how the ex what direction acceler like how would I draw it? Down the slope or horizontal? Yeah. Yeah. So this is where I want you to imagine where the center of this circle is. On this back view. Center of the circle essentially would be, you imagine extending this baseline to however far the radius is, and this is where the center of the circle is. All right, if you go down the hill, are you pointing to the center? No. You are not. So in order to point to the center, your acceleration has to be pointed horizontal. This is an important realization with this problem that the direction of acceleration is horizontal, not down the hill. It's also surprising, because you have seen the inclined plane problems before. And before, unless somebody was pushing the road or whatever, um, the acceleration would have been down the hill. And I'm pointing this out that in this case, when you consider everything, acceleration is not down the hill. It's uh, purely horizontal. So all right. So. Um, all right, and these forces are consistent with this direction of acceleration that we expect. Um, so we are going to move on to the next step. What's the next step? Define the axis. I'm going to define it this way, x and y, along the acceleration, right? So once you realize this, then the rest of the steps fall in. Once you realize the acceleration horizontal, then you realize the axis I'm picking is also straight axis instead of tilted axis. OK, um, and I need to break down forces into components. That would be n into x and y component. Uh, I might have to do a little bit of geometry to figure out this angle theta. So let me draw some auxiliary figures. Um, this is theta that was given to me. So that theta is this theta. Um, this angle is 90 degrees minus theta. So this is theta. Okay, once you know the angle theta, then I can write down the components. This is n sine theta. This is n cosine theta. Yeah. All right, uh, now I'm ready to write uh, Newton's second law equations. X. All of this might actually start to look familiar. Like it's beginning to look like similar to what we did here. But you know, I would go through this step every single time. Because depending on the problem, there could be some key difference somewhere. So I wouldn't just uh, assume they are the same. I would go through it step by step to make sure they are. So net force in the x direction and the net force in the y direction. There is only one force in the x direction. That's the x component of normal force. That actually answers a part B question. What provides the net radial or centripetal force? What provides that? Normal force. It's the component of normal force that's providing the force that's going to end up being our centripetal force. Yeah. So that's equal to net force is equal to n sine theta. That's equal to mass times acceleration. 
And I learned my lesson from last time. Let me just write down that this is a centripetal acceleration. So I actually know what it is. It should be mv squared over r. Like I know all of this already. No sense in pretending that I don't know it. Yeah. Net force in the y direction um, is normal force and the gravity. So n cosine theta minus mg is equal to 0. So that is, this is our end of our standard strategy, plus a little bit of information that I'm plugging in from my other knowledge of other formulas and situations. So let me do a quick check to see if I have the correct number of equations and unknowns. I have one, two equations. So I better have only two unknowns. Um, do I know the normal force? No. no. Do I know the angle? Here, no, because I'm, they are looking for it. Uh, I don't need to look at this. Do I, need, do I know velocity? Yes. It's given, yeah. It, we treat it as given. Yeah, so if the velocity weren't given, I couldn't answer this question. Do I, do I know the radius? Yeah, we also treat it as given. And you know, you can imagine a situation. If you're designing a freeway, you know what velocity cars should be driving at, <laughs> some speed limit or somewhere close to it, and you know the radius that you're designing for. So these are parameters that you would know as you are trying to design it. Um, all right, so, okay, that's it. Two unknowns, two equations, I can solve it. So let me get rid of n by solving for n in the second equation, plug it in, and I'll try to solve for theta somehow. Yeah. By the way, in this set of equations, what you are seeing is that you are seeing um, both sine theta and cosine theta. And I will tell you the mathematical strategy that I use. The strategy that I'm going for is I want to combine these into one trigonometric function if that's possible at all. Sometimes it won't be. In that case, you know, you have to write down, you know, cosine theta as a square root of one minus, uh, square root of one minus sine theta and work it out that way. So, it, you know, you have to be ready to do that. But usually when you do that, you are going to end up having to use quadratic formula. I, don't like using quadratic formula. So my first strategy is to try to combine them into one trigonometric function. Hopefully that will happen naturally. If it doesn't, we'll see it then. Okay, so solve the second equation for normal force. Then I get n is equal to mg divided by cosine theta. I have done this before. <laughs> okay, but you know, even if you have done it before, I recommend that you go through every single step for every single problem. Um, plug this in here, yeah, then it's going to be mg sine theta over cosine theta, so that's tangent theta. So that's the single trigonometric function I was hoping I would get, and I did. So I get mg sine theta over cosine theta, or tangent theta, is equal to mv squared over r, and the uh, masses cancel. Good, because mass of the car wasn't given. If you're designing a freeway, it could be for a semi-truck, it could be for a, well, probably not bicycle, a motorcycle. Um, so, so, for ta so here I'm going to solve for tangent theta. So tangent theta is equal to V squared over RG. Verify that on the right-hand side, the unit, it becomes unitless meter per second squared, meter squared per second squared, divided by meter times meter per second squared. So units cancel out on the right-hand side, as you'd expect. And that's it. I guess um, if you leave your answer this way, I wouldn't grade it as incorrect. Because oftentimes, this is uh, the cautious form to leave it in. This is especially true if you have a reason to think theta could, uh, theta could be become bigger than 90 degrees. If it might be in the second quadrant, third quadrant, or fourth quadrant, then you want to be careful how you use arc tangent. Um, here, you know, is this angle be gonna be bigger than 90 degrees? No. no. <laughs> so, okay, so I can use arc tangent then. I can say theta is equal to arc tangent of V squared over RG. But you know, I do mean the I do mean the cautionary note. For every problem, you have to think to yourself, you know, do I expect theta to be an acute angle? If it might not be, then you have to be careful in how you proceed from there. So that's it, that's the angle. That's the angle that would uh, uh, allow the cars to make this turn without sliding up or down. 
And um, now, you know, this is not a very realistic situation because there's no friction. Um, so for the realistic situation, this is what needs to be done. But let me actually try making a, a video for this, and I'll just post it on the course website uh, instead of spending class time for this. <laughs>